Okay, so here's the design for the the fire fountain music laser. It's quite simple. Uh, there's a couple. There's cro uh, chopstick crossbar. Ignore all the mangled wires. The crossbar allows you to just kind of mount it into a a beaker or a container, and then you raise the water level from the side here. You can see you'll raise the water level above the the input. That's where the water gets sucked in, and then it pushes the water out through this tube. And there's a hole in the tube, and the tube is bent off at the the very extremity, so that the water will only come out this little puncture hole and uh, it'll suck up water and push it out through that puncture hole. I like to put the, the water level just below the puncture hole and then have a, a layer of oil encapsulating the puncture hole and above so that it'll, t it'll suck water from the bottom and push the water into the oil which will create bubbles of water inside of the oil that can take quite a while to pop as well and they can merge with each other and create nice effects. The laser will shoot down onto the surface of the water and at very low intensities it will be creating bubbles inside of the oil that are kind of being created and dancing to the music. It'll then uh, scatter off and refract off forward and create this effect that dances to the music. As the intensity of the water pressure grows eventually it creates a stream and the stream will come out will eventually puncture the top of the oil and create this kind of a curvature, a, a nice curved stream that drops back down into the oil again. And that stream itself will actually get hit by the laser. So that, that's the next intensity. Once it actually breaks through the oil surface tension at the top and it's shooting a stream of water, the laser will be touching that stream of water. And that's what creates that fountain vertical slice effect that you see when this thing's running. After that, here's the real key part. On this crossbar, you can barely see it, but I've mounted a bit of copper wire. And what happens is when the intensity of the the water uh, stream gets high enough, it hits onto this wire here, and it will collect droplets on there. So at, as the base hits, for example, maybe it's strong enough, just strong enough that it comes up and it hits that. The water and the oil will adhere to that, and they'll create they'll create a droplet. And the droplet will slightly will slowly slide down, and the water and the oil will separate into separate layers and bubbles within bubbles. And all of that will basically happen right after the base hit. The base hit, that goes, and then it's kind of like a boom, and then a sliding effect after the base. So Boom, 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 quite nice. Um, and then it can get even stronger and it can go up over onto the bar and come back down around the other side. You'll end up with several layers of intensity. It's kind of like one, it hits this thing. Two, it hits the bar and splatters down onto the, the, the wire curls. Three, it goes all the way over and comes down the other side thus pr and then ending up back again sliding into the front of the, the water droplet. And four, it'll just kind of go right over the bar. You could even multi-layer these bars. So. Here's what the bar looks like, and you've got your kind of copper wire here with its little droplet catcher, and the stream will come up and hit that. You could add more bars. There's no reason you couldn't add multiple bars. And if you look from the side, maybe it would be like this. The bars would be slightly offset vertically with their catchers coming down. So what would happen is you'd have layers upon layers upon layers of intensity catching. Now that would probably create where you've got this kind of offshoots and bubbles, it would create bubbles inside of bubbles inside of bubbles. And eventually adding too many, the outer bubbles would be so dim and wide compared to the inner bubbles that it wouldn't matter. But you could actually just up the laser strength astronomically and make it a huge projection so that if you had a wall of a building, for example, there would be this great amount of detail right here in the center part of the wall. And on the outer sides of the wall, there would be less but faded detail. Uh, you, you can play a lot with it, and to increase resolution, all you really have to do is add a more powerful laser, that w thus allowing you to zoom it even more, and use more of the lenses. I try to use as few lenses as possible. This design requires no lenses at all. The water and the oil will do all the lensing necessary to create a very well-diffracted beam. Uh, it, c it comes out at quite an angle, so you, it, you just have to back off a little and you can get really big. Your problem will be your laser not being powerful enough to cover all the area that you desire. And ambient lighting. When you try to do it outside, of course you've got to deal with the ambient lighting. Um, there's also the possibility of some refractions coming off and people concerned about safety and whatever. So what you can always do is basically put a box directly over top of the unit and put an aperture for the for the beam to come out. That way there's no danger of anything coming out the back. Although a little bit does come out the back and it's quite beautiful. I, I like it. Um, and if you make the aperture you can control how big it, how much will go out. You can also put uh, basically if this was a clear plastic sheet and you drew black on it, you, that's how you could map it onto something. You could basically 
the map away areas and say, I don't want any lasers on this part of the, the wall or whatever. And then it would map it out. But you can only do negative mapping with this thing, really. You can't do any 3D mapping or anything like that. You could build multiple containers and do multiple 2D maps and then put together something. But I don't know how well that's going to look. Anyway, so that's the fire fountain laser. Yeah.